On today's episode, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process for restoring gel coats on either jet skis or boats, and we're gonna be doing it with that guy right there, Jason Rose from RupesUSA.com. That and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. So this is a 2011 Sea-Doo GTS 130. Now my friend picked this up for the 2021 season at an estate sale and dropped it off at the studio. At first glance, this thing is in pretty bad shape. There's spider webs, dried out chalky surfaces pretty much everywhere, mold, mildew, leaves, and old foot grips that are peeling off. So this thing needs a major facelift before it hits Candlewood Lake. Step one was to simply wipe up the major residue with white throwaway terry towels. When the seat and all the compartments were opened up, the smell from the mold was very strong, which makes sense since there was a lot of pockets that hold water for long periods of time, which is indicated by the spider webs that we kept finding everywhere. Next, I laid out the new Hydro Turf non-slip pads to make sure that we purchased the right or the correct kit. Where does this go? and then use the heat gun and our fingers to peel off the rest of the cushions, which was kind of a nightmare. Mm. After the pads were removed, the remaining glue would need to be dissolved with goof off, glue remover, and a plastic scraper. We also removed the dealership stickers as well. They were fading and they were messed up. They had to come off, but the same kind of concept for cars. You always tell the dealer, hey, leave the promotion stickers off before you buy, if possible. My friend, the owner, also asked for the badges and the registration to be removed for proper replacement later after the gel coat restoration. Most of the preliminary work done, we foamed the boat down with Boost and Brute and let it soak in before scrubbing the tight areas with a wheel brush. Notice the dots of mold pretty much everywhere. Same thing on the seat as well, there's mold pretty much everywhere, so Jason used Titan degreaser in a pivot bottle and a stiff bristle brush to agitate the mold before power washing the ski and the seat. After round one of cleaning, it already looks a thousand times better. Then we dried it with terry towels and compressed air before the restoration. Hey guys, I want to give you a heads up. In the next few weeks, we have a ton of crazy videos coming out. I'm detailing Target Arm, which is an engineering marvel. It will revolutionize drone usage around the world by capturing a moving drone from a moving vehicle. Completely insane. Can't wait to show you that one. Then we're detailing a slant nose roof Porsche in desperate need of restoration. The Koenigsegg Jamera Superbird Remac and Ice Blasting Training Series that we've shot six videos on, so make sure you're subscribed. Well, so we, uh, because this particular one had uh, sun faded, degraded, you know, padding and footsteps and things like that, so all that stuff was removed. We debadged it, uh, I guess we could say. We took some stickers off. Uh, we washed it up, scrubbed it up good, so here we are. Then the next step is we want to put on the textured plastic areas some dressing. So we'll put on some dressing here and the purpose of that is just to, to keep it kind of wet and lubricated. So as we're compounding, because we're gonna be machine compounding on the gel coat, uh, if we get any sling or any, you know, accidentally hit this, it's gonna wipe right off and we're not gonna actually stain this textured plastic. So that's a, a good thing to do before you buff. And then uh, we're gonna polish this out by machine. We'll probably end up using rotaries because uh, gel coat's very different than your automotive finish. So gel coat is a very, very different material and a surface than automotive cars and automotive clear coats. So the clear coat on a car is much softer, first of all. It's also much thinner. 
and uh, a lot less porous. So this gel coat finish, much more porous, much thicker, much harder, and it also oxidizes differently. So the gel coat, when it oxidizes, it actually kind of fades and, and the top layer of the gel coat dies, basically, and it becomes that, you know, matte, white, pasty look that you see on some of your boats. And uh, that doesn't happen on clear coat. Uh, so our remedy to this is we're going to remove that dead material on top and underneath should be some good gel coat and it will shine it up very good. Okay. The reason jet skis and boats have gel coat and a lot of your RVs have gel coat is because it is a much more durable and impact resistant you know, surface. Because these vehicles, recreational vehicles, they get hit and run over and you know you beach them and you do all this stuff. If this had an automotive clear on it, it would be destroyed the first day out. So the reason they have gel coat and, and uh, it's just for a more durable finish. So on Jason's recommendation, we coated all the dry plastics with ammo mud dressing to prevent a lot of work later when we inevitably bump an edge with a rotary or just accidentally hit something. It becomes much easier than just taping up the whole thing. To polish the paint, we use a Rupes rotary along with the blue cut and finish wool pad and of course the rotary coarse compound. After a few test spots, the difference of course is night and day, but the goal now is to refine the refining process. What I mean by that is pick the least aggressive method, uh, the least amount of time, least amount of material to get that desired outcome. So we're sort of tweaking things at this point. So now we tried the yellow wool pad and the yellow polish with a DA, not a rotary, on the red nose part of the ski, which looked much better, but the cut wasn't enough. So then we upped the cut to a blue wool pad and of course the blue coarse compound on a 15 millimeter DA. This got the cut that we were looking for, but obviously this requires a finishing step of the yellow foam pad and the yellow polish to complete the two-step process. Again, this was on the red parts or the colored parts versus the white gel coat. So on the white gel coat, we played around a little bit more and decided it would be faster if we just hit it first with a thousand grit sanding disc to cut the top layer of oxidation before hitting it with a rotary as we did in our first test. Now, normally I might skip all this voiceover and just go to, hey, it worked out great, but that doesn't really teach anybody or learn anything because watching us do a couple of these steps, that process of trying to figure out, hey, is this gonna work? Is that not gonna work? That is the key to detailing. The rest of it, you put your headphones on and you follow the, the path that you've decided in this test. But the test, that's what separates a, a good job, a profitable job, quick job, and making the customer happy. So that's why I left this in. So by using the wet sanding disc, it actually saves time and introduces less heat into the material. In this case, it's gel coat, which of course is counterintuitive to when you think of sanding, you think it's very aggressive. But remember when you're sanding, you're using water, which helps suspend the material. And at the same time, it helps keep that surface remaining cool. So that's why wet sanding in this particular case made a whole lot more sense than just grinding away with the rotary. We repeated the same steps on the black hull as well. Look at the before and after on the test spot that Jason did. Completely insane, especially on a ski this old. Again, in our never-ending tweaking, which by the way is totally normal, for the tight spots, we went with a 2000 grit sanding disc and introduced an interface pad to soften the angles when you're sanding. Now, a lot of you have asked, where can I get the interface pads, the sanding disc, machines, etc.? You can get that from my mentor and one of my closest friends in the world, Kevin Brown at buffdaddy.com. Likewise, if the machine can't get into the super tight spots, Jason simply sanded by hand. But you have to remember, you do not want to sand in areas that you can't buff out later with a machine. So avoid painting yourself into the proverbial corner. Now, all that's left is to split up the sanding and polishing on each side and simply go to work. <laughs> One of the most challenging spots were the stains that were created around the foot cushions. These were super embedded in the gel coat and required heavy sanding and polishing to remove. So to help with that removal, I tilted the machine, which of course will inherently increase the cut in that area as all its weight and heat is transferred to that specific location. So be aware when you're walking a bit of a tightrope when you choose this technique. 
When I was done, it looked a hundred times better, and I didn't waste my time removing the glue discoloration in the gel coat because we were about to cover it up with the new Hydro Turfs anyways, no sense in removing unnecessary gel coat. Same exact thing on the other side, of course, and the before and after was huge. Once done with the gel correction, we applied an ISO wipe and test fit the non-slip pads before peeling them back and playing sort of Tetris with the fitment. Once in, it made the ski look five years newer. Afterwards, Jason and I applied Ammo Reflex Pro, which works incredibly well on gel coats. In fact, it's our number one customer for springtime boat preparation, which is awesome validation. With the Pro curing, we reinstalled the seat before leaving it for the night. Now the shine was incredible after the initial application, but it only gets more deep as it cures over the next 24 hours prior to when the customer comes to pick it up. Well guys, we're all done and the jet ski looks unbelievable. The before and after is massive. Now we did a couple of different things that may not be normal, let's say on a regular car or typical car. Of course, this is gel coat. So the first thing that we did was the X cut foam sanding discs. Uh, we did that so that we could sort of minimize a couple of other steps or make it easier when we were using uh, the rotary, of course. Then uh, we used the rotary, and after that we used the DA. So we kind of used the entire plethora of things that Rupes has to offer with respect to, you know, all of their dif different systems, and it came out absolutely stunning in person. Your thoughts? Thumbs up. So I think the owner is going to be thrilled. We have a few more things to touch up right here, and then I'll, I'll bring him in tomorrow because it's pretty late right now. But of course, if you have any questions, you know where to find me, AmmoNYC.com and that man right there, Jason Rose, RupesUSA.com, or if you're international, Rupes.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.